Hello, thank you for joining me. This is our video number eight in our series, how to create a uh, simple uh, uh, electronic meter. Uh, the meter assembly uh, consists of two uh, different parts. We did our meter cap part, and now we're working on our meter base. And uh, what I like to do in this film is show you uh, how to put in a hole wizard, apply a cosmetic thread, do the circular pattern, and then we'll start putting tabs in on the side. And with those tabs in on the side, we're going to go ahead and do a linear pattern, so you can see how that works too. So, let's, uh, let's get to it. What we have in our sketch number five, and we're going to go ahead and show that sketch, is we have our uh, geometry that I've uh, just defined before. We sketch it's uh, you know, not on top, on the very top, but it's uh, close to the top. It draws a lot of the features that we have in our uh, model that we have here. One of the features that we're going to be interested in right now is going to be this whole wizard hole location. We've already put that in there, and that matches where it's going to be when we put our uh, whole assembly gun uh, together. So, let's go into that face, and let's go ahead and make that normal too, so we can see what we're doing. And let's go to the whole wizard uh, feature. What we want to do with the whole wizard feature is we want to make that a countersink hole. So we're going to start at the very top. We don't have any favorites selected, and you can, if you were to create something like this, you can put that into our favorites folder, but we'll describe that and show you that in, a, in another film. So we want to do countersink, ANSI metric, flathead screw. We're going to stick to this, uh, you know, the, this standard. You know, the B18.6.7M. Hole specifications, we're going to make that a uh, six millimeter hole. Uh, we're going to make the fit normal too. We're going to do uh, not through wall, we're going to do a blind and we're going to make it a certain distance. So if you think about this, we have uh, 30 millimeters for a depth in here for our cut. So let's go ahead and make this. Um, and of course, the width of this is 80. So let's go ahead and make that 50 millimeters. And uh, let's not mess with, uh, let's not make any changes to the head clearance. Let's go ahead and stick with the, you know, with the values that it has there. And let's go to positions. And now we've moved this off to the side. Let's go ahead and make it normal too again. Click in this face. And let's drag our point to where that point is. And in opposition to what we did with our meter cap, because we're normal too, we can pick things uh, up that are uh, uh, directly below it. So no additional work needs to be done there. We already have a coincident relationship. Go to the green check mark. Now we should be in pretty good shape. So let's just double check that. That should uh, have no uh, minus signs. In fact, none of our sketches should have minus signs next to them as we've been going. So good. So what we have in here, and you can probably see the bottom of that hole down there. Uh, what we have in there is a hole. What we're going to do with that hole and that hole is just big enough, it provides a clearance for a six millimeter uh, screw to go in there. But what we want to do down here is we want to make sure that we have threads down here. So if you think about it, it's going to be clear up here. Uh, the, you know, the screw is going to be able to pass through this hole. It's going to be able to pass through the hole in uh, the tab on our meter cap. But when it gets down here, we want to have threads down here. So let's go ahead and apply a uh, cosmetic thread. The way you do that is you go to Insert, Annotations, Go down here, do cosmetic thread. It might take a few minutes to think about it, especially if you're just initiating that uh, command. Uh, thread settings. What you want to do is you want to do ANSI metric for your standard. That would give you a nice narrower range of potential uh, threads that you could put in, put in on that hole size. So when you have this blue rectangle up here, it's asking for a selection. Let's go ahead and select on a circular edge. And then it's going to give us a suggestion. So we can go up to M8 uh, and M10 too, it looks like. But let's go ahead and stick with uh, what it's choosing for us. We're going to make sure we do uh, machine threads. And uh, we don't necessarily have to do uh, down to next if we don't want to. We could do blind uh, a certain distance if we want to do that too. But let's go ahead and stick with up to next. And that sounds fine to me. Let's go to the green check mark. So the preview of that wasn't quite correct. You notice that the preview had a circle way, way out here. And again, that circle, that's a test question, by the way. Uh, what do those dash lines mean? Those, uh, um, what they call the hidden line type. What does that really imply when it comes to a, a cosmetic thread? And what it implies is that uh, you have a hole in here with the material sticking out into the hole, but you also have cut portions of that hole, which is all part of the threading in there, there's actually uh, you know, a cut portion of the extent of the threads that are going into the material that you don't see in the surface here, and that's what that uh, dash line means. So, that's what we want. We have that embedded in here in our uh, hole wizard feature. And because it's colored over here, it's uh, going to show. Green check mark. 
If your threads, if your cosmetic threads don't actually show down here, you can see them as kind of like zebra stripes in a way. What you want to do is you want to go to your uh, uh, options up here, your options button, and you pull down menu. Go to document properties, go to detailing, and make sure this is checked up here. Shaded cosmetic threads. You go to OK. Now we're ready for a circular pattern. And there's going to be three elements we're going to do with our circular pattern. We're going to do a slot cut, slot tab, and our uh, old wizard hole. Let's go ahead and hide this sketch. We don't really need this now, so let's go ahead and hide that. And let's go ahead and get started with that. If you don't want to see that cosmetic thread, by the way, you can also turn it off here. You can right click on it and tell it to hide. And what that does is it gets rid of the, those dash lines as well as the cosmetic thread, too. Okay, circular pattern. So we're in a linear pattern on the features portion of your command manager. Circular pattern. Parameters. We want to make sure we turn on our temporary axes. So go to view. Temporary axes. And it's going to be a little teeny tiny line if you don't get close to it. We're going to click on that. So let's go up here and choose that, uh, that box up there and make that blue. Click on our temporary axis. It remembers what we did last time. So it's going to include that in there. We want to make sure it's equal spacing. Five elements. 360 degrees. Features to pattern. It might be easier to click these or select these out of our feature manager, our flyout feature manager. So slot cut, slot tab, and our whole wizard hole. You can see a preview of it. It doesn't really show it uh, really complete, but it should uh, complete itself if we do the green check mark. And there we have it. That's pretty cool. One more thing. Kind of a glitch. That's how it works. If you go back to cosmetic thread and show them, let's go ahead and rebuild that. And not only do we have an original hole, hole over here, the dash line showing uh, the threads in the background there, but also shows the threads over here that's zebra stripes. So if we go to some of these other features that we uh, went ahead and uh, mirrored or uh, did a circular pattern on, it actually shows it correct. So nothing additional to show. But anyways, sometimes it'll do this. It'll show the threading up here, which is really what we don't want. It's not going to affect your model at all, but it might affect some of your annotations when you get this and do a drawing. So sometimes it shows it, and sometimes it doesn't. But I think that's enough for this film. In the next film, I'll show you how to put the tabs on the side in order to mount this onto a back plane or a back plate. And then we'll put a uh, linear pattern on that after we put in our uh, hole wizard holes. And then we'll complete our model.